Greetings, friends. Welcome once again to our weekly devotional here at Clearwater Church. This week, we continue our study on the topic of one thing. In our previous studies, we covered the rich young ruler and how he upheld one thing back from the Lord. We also looked at Mary and Martha and learned how to balance practical matters in this life and how we can balance those with the com contemplative. This week, we're going to look at the next one thing, which is one thing I know. The focus of this study will be the events surrounding Jesus' healing of the man born blind in John chapter 9. The theme verse is John 9.25, which says, He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. The only thing that this man knew at the beginning of the story is that there was a man called Jesus. As Jesus initially heals this man, he addresses the physical need by opening his blind eyes. But as the story progresses, Jesus also opens his spiritual eyes. So he can see Jesus as the Son of God. He has a personal encounter with Jesus that changes his life forever. And by the end of the story, this man, while facing intense confrontation, proclaims before an entire city that Jesus is the Son of God. Let's start by looking at the section entitled The Cure. And we'll read the first few verses of John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. As he passed by, he saw a man from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, for night is coming and no one can work. As long as I am the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground, made mud with saliva, then he anointed the man's eyes with mud and said, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and came back seeing. You see, it's a human tendency to look at things through this myopic lens and think that God is judging someone that is sick or suffering. It was the attitude of Job's three friends. It was the attitude of these disciples. But in this case, Jesus is clear that God will grant healing to this man born blind, but he will do so to bring himself the glory. As we'll see in these following events, this man is obedient, he washes in the pool, and it is immediately healed. And now we come to the controversy of this story. We'll read a few verses uh, from John chapter 9, verses 8 through 12. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. And he kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how are your eyes opened? He answered, the, the man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, Where is he? And he said, I do not know. This is what you would call a notable miracle. Everyone knew about this man. Everybody knew that he had been born blind. They had seen him begging. And they were looking for an explanation about how he had received his sight. Initially, it's difficult to discern why the response was so big, even though the man himself said he was healed. The man's simple confession was that this man called Jesus because at the time, he did not really know who Jesus was. And in verses 13 through 15, the town takes the man to the Pharisees because Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath. They were all trying to find Jesus and determine who he was, but they were not doing it out of desire for the truth, but out of desire to discredit him. That was what the Pharisees were famous for, and they even said in verse 16 that he could not be of God, but was a sinner because he healed on the Sabbath. Others questioned, how could Jesus be a sinner and still be able to perform such miracles. And the town was divided in their opinions of who Jesus was. So they asked the man, verse John chapter 9, verse 17, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? And he said, Well, he is a prophet. In this short time, the man's belief has grown from a man called Jesus to he must be a prophet. The people of the town and the Pharisees were trying to rationalize what had occurred. They were trying to explain away the miracles and discredit what Jesus had done. Verse 18 says that they did not believe the man. They did not believe that he had been born blind or that he had been healed. They were blinded spiritually by their pride and hatred for Jesus. They could not see the miracles that was right in front of their eyes. So they called the man's parents 
and asked if he was truly their son and had indeed been born blind. When the parents confirmed, they asked, well, then how does he see? And his parents replied by saying, how, how, how we now see we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. The son told what he knew, verse 25, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. But one thing I know, I was blind and now I can see. It would have been easy for the son to hide his confession and avoid any further controversy. But he fearlessly stood his ground. He knew what a difference Christ had made in his life, and he could not deny it. And everyone who has met Christ and trusted him should make it known openly just like this. But Jesus isn't done working with this man. He now progresses to the revelation that he is indeed a man of God. Verses 31 through 31, that's that section. He concluded that Jesus is a man of God. Why? This is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. His confession showed the Pharisees how foolish their thinking really was. The simple-hearted believer knows more spiritual truth than these unsaved, educated theologians. The final result, they did. They excommunicated him from the synagogue. And even in the face of undeniable facts, the Pharisees cast him out and said, You were born in utter sin. How dare you teach us? And in this statement, you can see the pride of the Pharisees. They... They were they would not lower themselves to be heard or taught of this man, even though he had clearly had a miracle in his life. And we close out this story with these last few verses with the ultimate revelation of who Jesus is, and that is the Son of God. These verses 35 through 41, Jesus heard that they cast him out. And having found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said, Are we also blind? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, we see, your guilt remains. In just a short amount of time, this man progressed from being born blind physically and spiritually to understanding Jesus as the Son of God. And at the end of the story, the Pharisees continue to reject Jesus. And even though they can physically see, they remain spiritually. At first, all this man knew was a man called Jesus had healed him. He then thought he was a prophet and a man of God. And his, his final revelation, his complete confession of faith, that Jesus truly was the Son of God. It would have been easy for him to hide his con confession, to, to go back in and, and avoid controversy in the town. But he fearlessly stood his ground. His statement, I don't know whether he's a sinner or not, but I do know one thing. I was blind and now I see. He knew what a difference Christ had made in his life, and he could not deny it. I'd like to encourage us all today to take some time and think and reflect on what Christ has done for us. Do we make it known openly or do we hide and avoid controversy? Our life can be reduced to that one thing. And so many times when we face trials and tribulations and struggles, we can begin to doubt. But we can say, if we're rooted and grounded, we say, I know this one thing. I know God met me here. So may God bless you as you reflect upon that. What is your one thing that you are anchored to? that God has done in your life. And may we all embrace what he has done for us and proclaim it to the world as this young man did.